Welcome guys to a preview for this weekend's 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. A Grand Prix that hopefully will live up to the past few races in 2019 which have been fantastic. Well at least we know in Singapore chaos usually occurs. But if you want to find out from me what I think the pecking order is going to be and who I think will be good and not so good this weekend, then make sure to check out this video. Now the Singapore Grand Prix can at times be very very good but last year's race was not really that good. There was of course excitement at the start with drivers moving up and down the field at the start and also there was a crash between Sergio Perez and Esteban Ocon. Then we had some good racing for the first 15 to 20 laps between Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen with Max Verstappen coming out on top. Then we had the Sergei Sorokin train where he held back so many drivers from progressing up the field and it really did affect the race result. But ultimately dominating the weekend especially with an absolutely mesmerising pole position was Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes. And it's pretty hard to say that he won't do the same this weekend. But when it comes to winning and getting pole position at this circuit, it really is between Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel as to who is the best at this circuit. The reason being is because you have to be supremely skillful at this circuit and also be able to keep that skill up over the 61 laps. And also at a circuit that is known for being one of the toughest in Formula 1, at a race that is basically an endurance race. And I'm sure it'll be another race of attrition once again. But let's first start at the top of the field and who is going to be competing for the race victory. And for me, it will be the Silver Arrows Mercedes and Red Bull. As they're going to reignite, in my opinion, their fantastic battle from Hungary, a track which is very similar to Singapore. Now at Hungary, Mercedes eventually, through brilliant strategy work, did come out on top, but it was a tough, tough win. And they needed a superb driver in Lewis Hamilton to be able to get the best out of the car to get the race victory. And as long as Lewis Hamilton can keep up that level of performance, I think Lewis is going to be so hard to beat in Singapore. One, because as I said earlier, he's so good around this circuit ever since we came to Singapore in 2008. And also that car, especially in qualifying, I think will be a very, very strong car. I do think Mercedes are the favourites, but again, Red Bull will be absolutely there to compete with them. And again, going back to Hungary, with Red Bull and with Max Verstappen, they had a very, very competitive package. With them obviously getting pole position and competing for the race victory for so long, even though they didn't have the fastest car to win the race. And after the last two races, where of course Red Bull were not expected to do well, I think this weekend they're really going to bounce back. And I think Max Verstappen will because this is a Max Verstappen circuit and the Red Bull car will be suited to this circuit. Another thing to look out for though is Alexander Albon because at Spa and Monza, either Albon or Verstappen had a grid penalty for the Grand Prix. So we didn't really get a good idea when it came to qualifying how close Albon could be to Max Verstappen. And of course, both Red Bulls are not going to be taking penalties for Singapore, so we will finally get to see how Albon is compared to Verstappen, and hopefully he's not too far off. If Albon is within two and a half to three tenths of a second and Verstappen stays on the front row or even pole position, then Albon is in a great position for the race. And for Albon, that's all I ask of him going into the Grand Prix. But when it comes to the race victory, it is going to be Lewis Hamilton versus Max Verstappen. And after the battle we got in Hungary, I cannot wait for another classic duel, this time at night. And now we come to Ferrari. Now, of course, at Spa and Monza, where their car was very well suited to those circuits, Ferrari went on to get pole position and win those two races. And yes, Ferrari are on a high, but this circuit will bring them right back down to earth. Because the last time we were at a circuit that was remotely similar to Singapore, at Hungary, Ferrari were one minute behind the race winner. And I can promise you that Ferrari have not improved their aerodynamics that much since the Hungarian Grand Prix. So Ferrari are going to be miles off the top two teams and I think they're basically going to be halfway in between the top two and the midfield. Because especially in the race, with the bad race pace they do have, they are going to struggle so bad around this circuit. 
And because of how far they're going to be off Red Bull and Mercedes, they might as well just reenact their start to the 2017 race. Because it's going to be a very dull and boring weekend for Ferrari. So if you're a Ferrari fan, don't expect anything. And if you do get a podium, you should celebrate it a lot because it's going to be a long, long shot. But before we go into the midfield, let's first look at the Drivers' Championship. Lewis Hamilton leading now by 63 points. Verstappen is third, just ahead of Charles Leclerc. Then Vettel is fifth, Gasly still sixth. And then Sainz, Ricardo, Albon and Kvyat complete the top 10. Albon, of course, will be hoping to really jump up closer to Gasly and Sainz after this race. But now let's dip into the midfield and start to really analyse this apparent battle for P4 in the Constructors between McLaren and Renault. Now, of course, Renault at Monza scored 22 points and 22 massive points for their season. And of course, after this race, Cyril Beatball has started to talk about how they can absolutely finish P4 in the Constructors. But in my opinion, they won't do that because of this simple reason that we have eventually learned over 2019. At low drag circuits where straight line speed is important, the Renault car is good. For example, look at their performances in Canada and of course at the Italian Grand Prix. But when we come to a circuit where a lot of downforce or higher drag is required, Renault drop off. Look at Hungary or the Spanish Grand Prix as an example of that. So because of that, I don't see at Singapore or the tracks coming up, Renault being able to score enough points to really mount a challenge to McLaren's P4. Their car is not as bad as, say, the Haas car, but it's not good enough, in my opinion, on a consistent basis to be able to go after fourth in the Constructors. And also, let's not forget that McLaren in the last two races at Spa and Monza had a lot of bad luck. Lando Norris was on for P5 at Spa when his engine failed. And then at Monza, one of Carlos Sainz's front tyres was not on properly after his pit stop. And for me, that's the real reason that the gap has become a lot closer between McLaren and Renault. Not necessarily because Renault are now all of a sudden doing well, but because in the last two races, McLaren have been very unlucky. And as long as McLaren gets some better luck, I think they're going to be absolutely fine when it comes to P4 in the Constructors. And let's not forget the last time we came to a high aerodynamic track like Hungary, McLaren dominated the midfield battle. But talking about the Constructors, now let's look at the Constructors' standings. So of course Mercedes are P1 and heading towards another Constructors' Championship, Ferrari a second and Red Bull a third. Hopefully from a Red Bull point of view they can now start to catch Ferrari once again for P2 in the Constructors, a position that Red Bull can absolutely finish in. And then it's McLaren P4 by 18 points from Renault, then Toro Rosso a sixth, Racing Point a seventh, Alpha are in P8, Haas are P9 and Williams of course are P10. So when it comes to the rest of the midfield, how are they going to do in Singapore? Well for Alpha and Mayo, I don't think pace wise they're going to be particularly good but they do need a good weekend because the last two races they should have scored a lot more points than they did. Because they really had a very good car but after not scoring enough points that they really should have done now they're in a position where they're now falling away from teams like Renault, Toro Rosso and Racing Point in the Constructors. So Alpha at least need a strong result in the race with say Kimi Raikkonen because they've got to start scoring points on a regular basis once again. There's no point talking about Haas because they don't know how to look after tyres so come back to me when they've learnt how to do that. Toro Rosso, I think, this weekend are going to be good because historically Singapore has been a great track for them and high aero circuits in the past in 2019 for Toro Rosso have been pretty good. Think back to Monaco, for example, where they were so, so strong. But one thing Toro Rosso have to do is try and avenge the points finish they lost with Daniel Kvyat at the Italian Grand Prix because they really did lose some vital points. And I still don't trust that Renault are really doing that well at the moment. So I think Toro Rosso, if they can score points once again, they can really start going after Renault again. Racing Point for this weekend have a new big upgrade, but also this upgrade is their last one for 2019. 
So if it does work, racing point for the rest of the season should be very, very quick. But I will say, if they are quick this weekend at a circuit that historically racing point have never been that good at, then for the rest of the season they're going to be very strong. So definitely look out for Racing Point and whether their new upgrade has worked. And Williams, of course, are going to be at the back. But the midfield, no matter what, is still going to be very, very close. But if they are going to race one another, where can they pass? Well, at the start of the race into turn one, two and three, you can definitely overtake. But after the first lap, it is very hard to pass into this part of the circuit unless you are way, way quicker than the car ahead. So after the first lap, the only place you can really overtake is the braking zone at turn 7 after the DRS straight. If you can't pass into here, then most likely you will not be able to overtake. Again, unless the car you're trying to pass is at least a second a lap slower than you. So for this weekend, don't expect a ton of overtaking, but you never know, we could have other things happen such as crashes, safety cars, all of that stuff. But for this weekend, what do I think will happen in terms of the result in qualifying and the race for the top three? Well, in qualifying, I'm going to go for Lewis Hamilton on pole position from Max Verstappen second and Valtteri Bottas in P3. And then in the race, I'm going to go Lewis Hamilton to win from Verstappen second and then Valtteri Bottas in P3. Again, it is really hard to overtake here and I think it will really be decided in qualifying as to what happens for the podium. But guys, let me know in the comments section when it comes to this weekend, what do you think will happen with all the teams and who do you think will qualify in the top three in qualifying and who do you think will finish on the podium in the race? Let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, guys, that is it for this preview. Just to let you know, though, I will be live at 1 p.m. UK time tomorrow for the Practice 2 watch along for the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. So don't forget to subscribe for that. Bottom right of the screen, you can do it right there. Or go to my homepage and subscribe there. And don't forget to smash a like button for more content like this. But until that stream tomorrow, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.